In this After Effects tutorial, we're going to talk about proper organization. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film and this tutorial right here might be the most important tutorial I have ever created because organization to me can either make things easy and make your project fun and make it quick to create or if you open up an old project file that you haven't visited like in a month or so and you open it up and everything's offline, everything's disorganized and that can be absolutely disastrous, especially if you have to go back and adjust a project file. And in my last video, I talked about seven tips when working with clients, and my number one tip was organization. Go ahead and check that video if you want a little bit more. So let's take a look at this project that I have open right here. And you know, for the most part, the folders are you know, they're not perfectly organized, but they're decent. I also have folder consistencies there. Um, but I opened up this main composition here, and there's no pre, like there's not many, uh, layers that are pre-composed and as you can see we have over 300 layers of just data here that is I don't even know what to do with there's so much so if I had to reopen this project almost a year and a half later um, I'm not going to really know what's going on here because nothing's organized with compositions and it was also funny we have offline media here so what we're going to talk about is how to properly organize this without having offline media and having proper folders here and understanding when to pre-compose. So as you guys know, all the media for our project lays in the project window right here. So let's go over to our finder over here, or if you're on a PC, I'm pretty sure it's called Windows Explorer, but all your organization techniques are gonna start where your source folder is gonna be at. So what I do at the beginning of a project is I always create a new folder and you know I'll title it the name of the project. So maybe in this case, I'll just do like 89 uh, you know, organization tutorial. And maybe in your case, you might be like, uh, you know, Barbara's, you know, barber shop, you know, that might be the name of the actual, uh, you know, project file or the source folder. And this is where we're going to keep all of our media. So what I like to do, create a new folder, you know, call it elements. And then I want to create another folder and call it projects. And we're going to go into the projects here and we might create one folder called after effects. And we might even create another one, say, if we know where this project can be edited in, say, Adobe Premiere, we would create another folder called Premiere. So this is pretty much straightforward. You're going to keep all your After Effects projects in the After Effects folder and all your Premiere projects in the Premiere folder or whatever other you know editing software that you're using for your main project. Okay, so now in our Elements folder, we're going to create a couple other folders here. We're going to create one called Audio, and we're going to create another one called Graphics, and maybe one more that we'll call you know just Footage if you're working with any live action footage. Now, this might depend on what other type of media you're working with, but maybe in the Audio folder, we might do like Music, One called, you know, VO for voiceover. And if, of course, you might want to do one for sound effects, but you usually don't do sound effects work inside of After Effects. The only type of music and VO that you'll put in there is if you're trying to edit to audio. So this is very important. Even under the music folder, I might go as far as putting a watermarked uh, folder and a licensed folder as well. So that's something to think about. And for footage, I might come in here and do like, you know, raw footage. And then I might do one called, you know, colored footage or uh, maybe VFX footage or something like that. So I would put all my raw footage in here. If I get it color corrected, I'll put that in here as well. So that's how you can separate that. We'll go in the graphics folder. We might go in here and do like vectors. We might do like, um, you know, images. And maybe we'll also do, you know, logos for sure. So, and of course, you might want to expand on this, but this is the basic concept of having proper file organization. And what you want to do is you don't ever really want to, say, grab an asset, say, out of like your stock folder out of your main, uh, you know, stock library. You might go in here. I might just take this, you know, Illustrator logo, for example. I'll just copy it. I'll go into our actual uh, folder that we just created, and I will paste that right into our logos folder. The reason why we would do this is because when we're done with the project, we might zip this entire thing up, put, you know, archive it, and put it on a hard drive because it might be, you know, three gigabytes, and this is on my source hard drive on my computer, and we, you know, of course, we don't want to keep a bunch of projects that we're not using right now, so we'll back that up. And if you don't have, say, this logo that you're using in your After Effects project in your main zipped files, it's going to go offline when you reopen it, maybe on a different platform, or maybe you accidentally delete that stock logo that we just 
you know, pulled out of our stock folder. So that's something you gotta think about. So I know all this basic folder stuff isn't After Effects, but let me go ahead and show you guys the quick importance of this. So if I go here, so if I go over to say an old project that I just threw on here for this tutorial, and I open up this old project that I did probably two or three years ago, I don't remember. As you can see, we have 14 files missing since I last saved this project. And that's because I didn't put the source logos or the source, uh, you know, files in my actual home folder where I have all my work and project files at. So now finding these 14 files are going to be absolutely insane. And I have to go in here, you know, right click this offline media, which is just a Photoshop document, go to replace, you know, file and not have to search for it, which I don't know any, I don't have any idea where this file is at. It's probably on a hard drive somewhere. Who knows? So now I'm kind of like, ugh. So this is the reason why you want to keep all your source files in the same home folder of your project. So once all your folders are set up, go ahead and start you know, dragging the media that you know you're going to use into these folders. So now that we're over in After Effects, we can go ahead and import everything we've created. We don't have to recreate the organization here inside of After Effects. So let's go up to File, Import, File. And we'll go ahead and navigate to the Elements folder. And here's all of our folders that we created on, on our computer. And let's just make sure the Elements folder is selected and click on Open. And let's go ahead and we can open up our elements folder here. And you see we have all the folders inside of After Effects and all these nice, you know, consistencies that we've created. So we got logos and you see it also imported our assets. So you don't have to create all your folders inside of After Effects. You can do it on your computer and stay organized. So your After Effects files are properly organized with your, I'm going to just say finder folders here just because I'm on a Mac. But as you can see, that's really awesome and things are completely organized. So as we start building this project and we need to import other assets that are not organizing these folders yet, go ahead and just import them into your main folders here. Create any necessary folders that you have to as you go along just in case you didn't think of it. And of course, go ahead back in After Effects and import them in the according folders. And this way things will stay consistent and you'll have proper organization. And of course, make sure to always save your project at least after you imported your original assets. And of course, just tile it properly. You might want to put like a number behind it just in case, you know, things change or whatever. But go ahead and just, I'm going to call this one organization. And now we have that saved. Okay, so let's talk about compositions and color coding your layers. So this is definitely an old project, but luckily I went ahead and color coded everything and pre-composed all of my main scenes here. So this is obviously about a two and a half you know, minute animation here. And all these compositions are specific uh, scenes. So I can go here, double click maybe this one, and you see I have all these scene elements inside of this composition along with other elements. So let's talk about when you should actually pre-compose specific elements. So as you can see, Pre-composing each of these scenes is quite helpful because I understand where everything's at and what scene I'm on. And I perfectly labeled each scene. So, and right now the uh, you know layer that I'm on top of right now is labeled service info, which tells me that, hey, okay, this is providing us a little bit of information. You know, it's definitely not statistics or anything like that, or, uh, you know, it's not, you know, a question or like the actual brand logo. I know that I'm going to get some information in this composition. Even after opening this project file after two years, I know kind of what's happening. So, of course, na uh, naming your layers is very important and keep that relevant. And if we double click this composition, we'll go in here and we'll see three separate compositions here. And basically, I know that each of these compositions is each of these cloud elements. And if I turn it off, as you can see, that the text in the clouds get affected. So, I know all these elements are grouped together. So, Basically, I know that this entire element is going to be animated together, so I went ahead and pre-composed these four elements here. And we went ahead and put it into one element, so that's when you would pre-compose that. So you want to pre-compose when you want to build a big element together and you know it's going to be one group. So that's when you would actually pre-compose for that example. And then we went ahead and pre-composed this entire scene when we were done animating it because I knew that this all flowed together and it was done. So we went ahead and put it into our main composition like this. So now I can scrub through here. We have the entire scene is organized and we can go ahead and make updates uh, when we need to. We just double click the comp and we're into it. And then of course, you know, sometimes you're not gonna have all your scenes. This one right here is just a transition. I have overlaid between two scenes. That's why I have a color code, a specific color that's not related to all the normal big scenes in here. So I went with, with orange and put all my main comps blue. And of course I have some offline music in here, but that's not a big deal for me right now. And then I have some basic elements at the bottom here, which are, you know, just background elements. So that, that's why I have them separate in here, just because I want to go and change them really quick. I don't have to go into that composition and then, you know, I can actually see the entire affected image here. So, so you definitely want to think about coloring and let's talk about actually labeling your colors real fast. So if I go here, right, you know, click on the actual color code here, as you can see, we got a bunch of colors here, but as you can see, I have one color called Sunduck and that's my actual logo color. And basically what we, what we can do is go up to the top here, go to preferences and we can click on labels. 
And what's great about this, what's great about After Effects is that they let you choose specific colors just by clicking on the color tab here and you can always rename it. And you know, maybe uh, you know, we can change the color if we want. I'm not going to because I like, I'm all used to that red color, but we can come here and maybe rename this to Still Graphics. So I can come in here and maybe read color code these two graphics at the bottom to my red color, which is still graphics. So this is another way you, that you can actually learn how you organize projects. So you can rename all these to specific, you know, styles of graphics that you're working with for specific layers. So I might have one for, you know, I might actually title one called compositions. And I know everything that's in that color is a composition or everything, you know, maybe in yellow, you know, I have it called vector and I know that's a vector image. So that's an example of, you know, good organization. So let's say our project is done and we want to start rendering previews. Um, what I suggest doing, create a new folder called renders. That's what I like to do. Or you can do exports. And this is where you can put all your exported videos into the renders folder here. So let's say your project is done. You know, your boss or your client, they really like it and it's 100% done. What you can do is go to the main home folder here, right click it, and you can compress the folder. And what and then what you can do is go ahead and back that up on a hard drive. And if you followed all these organization techniques correctly, you know, you can put on, you know, whatever hard drive. And when you open it up again in the future, you'll have all your media intact and nothing will be off. And then if you need to come back to this project, say, you know, several months from now or even a year, you should be able to open up the zip file and all your media should be you know, intact. Nothing should be offline when you open up the After Effects project file. So I hope you guys found this video informative and hopefully you guys will take some of these techniques that you may have learned in this video and apply it to your future projects so you can stay organized and avoid tons of headaches. So if you guys did enjoy this video, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you have not already for more After Effects tutorials. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.